Poor Pac-Man. Despite being one of the most recognizable icons of gaming culture, he doesn't really see much action nowadays outside of Smash Bros, Chief spin-offs, and, um... Oh, man. I'm a meme. Whatever that was. So I've decided to show the guy some respect by dedicating a video to the very thing Pac-Man represents. Eating. Right from his very first appearance back in 1980, Pac-Man has been known for gobbling all sorts of fruits, power pellets, and of course, the little orbs known as Pac-Dots. What exactly is a Pac-Dot? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Today I'm going to explain what I think a Pac-Dot is and how you can make some for yourself. I'm Nick Purcell, and welcome to the kitchen. So pack dots. What are they? They appear in pretty much every Pac-Man game, and they're clearly delicious, at least to whatever messed up species Pac-Man belongs to, but we don't really know anything about them besides their appearance. Originally being depicted as a single white pixel in the arcade game, the dots typically appear as small, yellow, spherical objects, far too abstract to determine what a real-world equivalent could possibly be. They certainly don't look like food. But, as it turns out, you can find the answers if you look hard enough. Remember earlier how I said Pac-Man's more recent endeavors haven't exactly lived up to his iconic status? I'm a meme. Well, ironically, it was in one of his newer games that I found exactly the answer that I needed to make this video. Oh, and by newer, I mean it came out a decade ago. Pac-Man Party, originally released in 2010 for the Nintendo Wii and later ported to the 3DS, Basically, Pac-Man meets Mario Party meets Monopoly meets a whole lot of meh. The most positive thing critics had to say about it was that it included ports of classic Namco games. Always a good sign when the best part of your game is easily available elsewhere. But there's one interesting thing about this game, and that's the fact that it refers to Pac-Dots as cookies. Uninspired and anticlimactic, you say? I thought so too. But apparently the dots way back in the arcade game were originally meant to be cookies. The more you know. So now we have a starting point to base our recipe on. Our next step is to figure out what type of cookie a pack dot is. While it's easy to refer to a single pixel as whatever you want, we want to keep up with the modern design, which is definitely not chocolate chip. We need something smooth, yellow, and spherical. I decided to mainly focus on getting the spherical part right first, as the rest could be adapted later. I eventually came across a recipe for Mexican wedding cookies, or snowball cookies, that I decided to use as a basis for the pack dots. Snowball cookies are little icing sugar coated shortbreads that look exactly like they sound. Now, the snowball look isn't exactly what we want for a pack dot, but the shape is pretty much what we need, so these will be perfect for modifying into a treat fit for a... the pack... person? Alright, it's time to start making our dots. Now remember, you always need to wash your hands before preparing food. So Mexican wedding cookies usually have some sort of nut like pecans in them. And pecans are good, so we're going to keep those here. But to enhance the flavor, we should toast them first. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, then take about half a cup of pecans and spread them out on a cookie sheet. When the oven is heated, you want to put them in for about 7 minutes or until you start to smell them. While we're waiting for the oven to heat though, you want to get started on the dough. First, get a large mixing bowl. Add a half a cup of icing sugar, a cup of butter or margarine, and some vanilla extract. If you're using pure, you'll want to use a teaspoon, but if you're using artificial, you can be a bit more liberal with it. I used about a tablespoon here. Mix until well combined. In a separate bowl, put two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour and a dash of salt, then gradually combine with the wet ingredients. And to get that yellow pack dot color, you should add a few drops of food coloring until it reaches your desired hue. When your pecans are done toasting, chop them up on a cutting board and mix them into the dough. Now what can we do to amp up the pack dottiness of our cookies? Well, another one of Pac-Man's favorite foods happens to be cherries. Maybe the dots have cherries in them, and that's why Pac-Man loves them so much? Or maybe I just wanted an excuse to use maraschino cherries? Either way, they're going in the cookies now. Chop up about half a cup of the cherries into little pieces and plop them in the dough. Are we done? No! Because what else pairs better with cherries than chocolate? That being said, we don't want the chocolate to be too overpowering, so I use mini chocolate chips, and only a quarter of a cup of them. Alright, now we just have to mix it up and we have our dough. The next thing we have to do is line a couple cookie sheets with parchment paper. 
Now for normal Mexican wedding cookies, you would want each cookie to be about a tablespoon of dough. But since we put so much extra stuff in here, you might want to be a little more generous with it. I wasn't even measuring here, just kind of scooping up balls of dough at random and putting them on the sheets. Use your judgment, you're smart, I trust you. You should be able to fit 15 cookies to a sheet in three rows of five. Then put them in the oven for 14 minutes. I usually put them on for seven, then rotate the sheet, and then another seven, but maybe I'm just being extra. Once the cookies are finished, transfer them to a wire rack to cool. And there you have it, pack dots. Now I- Um, excuse me? I know what you're gonna say, and yes, they are as delicious as they look. No, I was gonna say those look nothing like pack dots. You put too much random crap in them, they're supposed to be all smooth and yellow. Hmm, I suppose you're right. I'll see you smell funny. Shut up. Okay, so there are a few more steps before we're finished. It's true that we may have gone a little bit overboard with the ingredients, but it's all in the name of taste. And the cherries are pretty accurate to the source material, right guys? Guys? Oh well, now we just have to make up for it. What can we do to give these cookies a smooth yellow look? My answer? White chocolate. Once your cookies are cooled, it's time to melt some white chocolate chips in the microwave. Before that though, you'll need to line a large plate with wax paper. The first time I did this, I didn't use wax paper, and the cookies all stuck to the plate and broke to pieces when I attempted to remove them. Okay, back to the chocolate. I used a single pack of chips, and it wasn't quite enough to coat every single cookie, so you'll probably want to use about a pack and a half. Get a microwave-safe bowl and pour your chips in. I used about half a pack at a time, then melted more when I needed it. Microwave for 30 seconds, remove, and stir, then do it again. By this point they should have reached the desired consistency. Mix in a few drops of yellow food coloring, and now it's time to start dunking. Try to get as much chocolate as you can on the cookie so that no part peeks through. When the cookie is nice and coated, transfer to your wax paper lined plate. When you're finished with all the cookies, place them in the fridge to allow the chocolate to cool. And there you go. What'd you guys think? Did you agree with my methods for making real life pack dots? And if not, what would you have done differently? And did you make these for yourself? Let me know in the comments below. And don't be afraid to like and subscribe for more content. Thanks everyone, have a nice day.